Hello everyone, my name is Casper. I want to show a quick and easy way to do tiling textures in ZBrush where you don't have to make any guides first or have to clean anything up in Photoshop afterwards because let's face it, that's just disgusting, right? No one wants to actually clean up after themselves. So it's very simple. We just, as you can see, we start off just with the default plane in ZBrush, make it a Polymesh 3D, and then we enable Array Mesh on it. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, by the default settings here, setting the X amount, Y amount, etc., it will always make the array depending on the bounding box of your model. So you can see here, I set it to two, it will work perfectly. But as soon as I then start moving a single vertex, it will break or, you know, it will not work for our purpose of, of making it tidable. So you fix that easily by just locking position and locking size. And as you can then see, it then works uh, for our purpose. So let me just uh, disable these again and uh, append new and set it on the Y axis as well. So we have our four different planes, which is exactly what we need. So lock position and size again, and then you have your tiling set up. Uh, you can combine this as well with using wrap mode, which you might be um, used to working with, which works on this plane as well. So if you want to have some grout or something in between your stone tiles, you can have wrap mode on this plane in the background and then having all your tiling stones on top of that. So um, as you can see, I just used insert mesh to get something on there. Um, and then we split that by mast uh, by holding control and then dragging this out. We can just make our tiling textures like we normally would just duplicate this stuff around. We have our whole tile showing always. I just have the poly frame on so I can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I think the, um, the shapes might blend too much together sometimes. Um, and that's that's it, guys. So I, uh, obviously, you can see here that I, um, I, I mess up the tiling a little bit. Like I have this one line going through the entire texture, which is obviously bad, but yeah, for the for the purpose of this of this demonstration, I guess that's okay. Uh, just be aware that when you scale it, as you can see, I did I get some random heights. In this case, I don't care because I want to have some random heights anyway. But just be mindful of only scaling it on uh, on X and Y if you don't want to have this. Um, and that's basically it for the whole tiling setup. Uh, just go down into uh, polygroups, auto groups to get all your different um, polygroups perfectly set up. And uh, then we can always just come in and put Dynamish on it. Uh, enable groups so they don't all merge together. And that's it, then we are ready to sculpt on it. Uh, here we then have our high poly, the plane in the background, the original one we can we can use as our low poly uh, default in ZBrush already has UV, so we don't need to do anything, we can just export it. Um, one thing to be aware of though is that since we started up in the left corner, in this case, it, it might have some negative space. So to make sure that it tiles perfectly, um, without any uh, visible gaps or anything, we can just go down here to deformation and add an offset and just put that to 100. So um, that will be in the center of the four array meshes that we made before. So no matter how you set it up, this will always work. Um, and, and one other thing just to be aware of, if we export this array mesh now, we, we actually only get the top left half or the portion of it because the rest doesn't exist, it's just an array. So what we need to do is just to make that an, an actual mesh to be able to bake it, which uh, we just do by going down in the transform stage and then clicking make mesh down here. And that makes the mesh for that first transform stage and we then just have to do it for all our stages, which is twice, and then we have the whole high poly and that's it. So this was the intended end of this little mini tutorial, but as I had Zebras open anyway, I thought, why not sculpt it? Uh, this time lapse is sped up by a factor of 10. So the total time sculpting this was around 54 minutes. And while this is by no means a mind blowing sculpt, it's enough that you can touch a smart material on it and get it in engine for a test. Sometimes this might even be shipped. And I guess that's really what I would like to get across with this small video. Work fast, work in iterations, get stuff in engine now. I've met many artists who would spend several days on a texture like this just to get an engine and then see that it doesn't quite work anyway. And by working in iterations, you would spend an hour on a sculpt like this, throw a smart material on it, and then get in an engine and move on to the next thing. So in one day, you can have blocked out several of your tileable textures like this, or maybe even a pretty big part of your environment or overall look of it. 
Um, some, some of these might actually even be good enough that you can simply ship them and others might need a little bit more iteration and then you simply go back and do that. So it's a it's simply a workflow I believe saves a lot of time uh, as it will enable you to see your scene and work on what needs to be worked on instead of spending a lot of time on something that might not even need that attention anyway. So one of the things to keep in mind when, when doing something uh, attailable like this is to not make uh, something too unique. If you make one stone very big, make sure there's at least one other brick of equal size. Uh, same can be said for height, color, or any kind of damage or, or detail. I'm already messing it up a little bit here by varying my sculpt technique a little too much between each stone, and therefore I go back and retouch those areas a bit to make everything a little bit more uniform. If you ask, if you ask about what brushes to use, then the answer is simply that it doesn't matter. Like you can use flatten or mallet or trim or clay or you know anything else really. Uh, in this demo, I think I use all of them just you know for fun. Um, but you really don't need to. Just uh, you know, select whatever you like to do and then just go for that. Like what brushes you use doesn't matter. It's the result that matters. So some some brushes might feel good for some people. Others might feel better for other people. And then just just do that. There is no right or wrong here. And in general, just don't be afraid to go in there and be rough and dirty and just destroy it. You know, destroy those edges and make that detail. Or pull out the whole thing. Or you know, move stuff around. It's it's much more important to be to be rough and, and sketchy, basically, and just like get the big reads in there and evaluate the texture as a whole. So like either work out from, like, work from, from this zoom out view or when you zoom out, look at it and then zoom back in and then work on a specific area of that deliberately. Don't be that guy who sits totally zoomed in and tweaks the same little pixel for 20 minutes and then zooms back out and realizes that it sucks. So instead, just focus on the big reads, the like edges, and and you know the overall flow. Think about the normal map base, like right? the, the direction of stuff. Those are the big reads, the medium reads, and the details. Just forget about those for now, because in in the big picture, they really don't matter. What what matters is the big reads. And actually, I would take that a step further and say that if you need to sculpt any details, I suggest you don't. Just they take way too much time for their impact. So rather go make an alpha instead. For example, I made a few of these cracks and stone detail alphas five years ago or four years ago, and I'm still happily using them on pretty much every stone I ever make. So maybe I could make a few new ones now and then. That would probably be a good idea. But the point is just that this speeds up your work a lot because you can just focus on what actually reads, you know, what, what actually is important when you get this in, in game. Remember that when you sit here in, in ZBrush or whatever tool you have, then you focus your entire attention on the entire viewport or your entire screen on this one texture. When you have this in game or in an environment, it will, yeah, you know, the majority of the time it will not be this big, right? If this is something on the pavement and you even like on the floor, then you even see it on an angle. So, you know, the, the amount of pixels that the stuff you do here takes up on screen is, is usually very small uh, or far away if it's on a building or whatever it is. So that's why these, the big reads are really the most important. And th those are the ones you need to get right. And all the details don't really matter. So just put some alphas on them. Just, yeah, make one alpha or two alphas and just use them on everything. You can always come back later if you notice, like, hey, I you know, made the stone crack and I just see that on every stone I, <laughs> stone I ever make. Then, yeah, going to make a, f a few new ones later. But don't then sculpt every crack you ever do. That will just take way too long. Like if it has to look good, it will just take way too long. Instead, just sculpt it once, make an alpha out of it, and then slap that on everything. This also has the benefit that um, that the work feels the same. Like it, not necessarily similar or like exactly the same because the big reads and the medium reads will still be different. It will still be different kinds of stones or wood or whatever it is you do. But it will it will have the same style to it or the same touch. And it's really important when you when you make an environment anyway, right? You don't want stuff to look like it's just kit best from completely different worlds or different scenes, right? You want stuff to belong. You want things to look like it's all in that same world. So really don't don't think of alphas as cheating. I know some people do that. Like instead think of it as you being a smart artist, working fast and winning in life. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, just let me know.